Welcome back to this course on electronic packaging and manufacturing. Uh, today what we will do is we are going to wrap up our discussion on circuit boards and, and circuit board manufacturing. Um, if you recall in the last lecture we had started with the circuit board I mean in the last couple of lectures we have been discussing circuit board manufacturing and in the last class what we had was we had this entire assembly having these laminates one after the other and with the wiring traces right. So, if you recall we had said that that was circuit board uh, step 1 fabrication step 1. So, today we are going to complete that process okay? and uh, the final stage requires you know having these bond pads on both surfaces and then the components being placed on that. So, once that is done then the circuit board is ready. So, that is what we are going to discuss today we are going to finish up the discussion on the circuit boards and then look at the final step which is assembly of components okay, on the on the circuit board. Okay. So, that is the concepts that are going to be covered today when we talk about the last stage we are going to talk about something called solder mask and screen printing and then component assembly and finally, we will summarize our discussion on circuit boards. Okay. So, with that let us move on. The first thing is what is solder mask? Let us first look at that what is solder mask and then we will see why, why we use that and how we use it. So, the solder mask is a heat resistant thin polymeric coating which is applied to the board and why is it that as the name suggests solder mask. So, it is like a mask again and it covers most of the board and just exposes those portions where we need to deposit solder because this is these are the locations where the solder joints will be made and the components are going to be placed. Okay. So, again I repeat heat resistant thin polymeric coating applied to the board to prevent the deposition of solder in areas where solder joints are not to be made. Okay. Which means in other words the solder mask also exposes those areas where solder joints are to be made. Okay. And these are the areas once again where the components are going to come and get placed. So, these are the bonding pads as we had discussed during first level packaging. Remember we said that these leads or the solder balls that come out of the first level package the, the chip or the chip carrier these are going to be attached or joined to the bonding pads on the circuit board. Right? Okay. So, what are the functions? So, functions of the solder mask are the following it prevents solder bridging between conductive tracks. right? So, if there are two wiring traces that are going one after the other and then you put solder maybe on some locations on that wiring trace where we are going to have this um, component bonded then how does I how do I prevent the solder from flowing and you know shorting these two traces. So, I need to some I need some kind of a protection and the solder mask provides that. It controls the outer layer impedance this is from the electrical point of view minimizes handling damage because this is also protective coating. So, during assembly when it goes to conveyor belt you have pick and place machines we are going to see a video on that it minimizes the damage because of handling. Okay. It increases corrosion and flammability resistance okay. corrosion resistance and flammability resistance I want to I mean, this the way I have written I am now realizing it can be you know interpreted differently it does not increase corrosion it increases cor corrosion resistance or resistance to corrosion. Okay. So, it increases both resistance to corrosion as well as resistance to flammability okay. and finally, from the aesthetics point of view it improves the board appearance okay. this shiny thing that you see on the board etcetera this is the solder mask. So, it is a thin heat resistant polymeric coating. Okay. Now, what is the process? How do I put this solder mask? Okay. So, this is again a photo photopolymer mask to expose the areas to be soldered. Okay. So, the mask again is, is you know it is a photopolymer mask as I said before in the last slide and it is now placed on top using a film lamination process. Okay. So, the, the film lamination process is not new you know even, even some of our photographs we want when we want to preserve it we film laminate that. Okay. So, it is a film 
with slight, uh, I mean, you, you put it on the surface that you want to laminate and, and then you apply a little bit of pressure and temperature and you, you have this film lamination done. Okay. Next thing is, now I have put the solder mask and then I have certain exposed areas where I need to deposit solder. Right? As the copper traces before, I need to deposit solder on those areas which are exposed. So, to do that, what we do is, it is called a screen printing or stencil printing process. Okay. So, the screening, what it does is it uses a fine mesh, it can be a nylon or stainless steel fibers, it is very fine and on top of that, you have this solder. Uh, Okay, sorry, I, I, I take it back before that. This is the screening on the stencil film that is placed on top of the screen and then you have this liquid polymer forced through the screen using what is called a squeegee and the polymeric coating dries and forms this mask. Okay. So, that is the film lamination and screening process. Okay. After that what happens is the following. So, this is a screen printing process as you can see that this is a squeegee blade. You know, if you look at a mason when he applies, let us say, plaster of Paris on the on the walls uh, or even cement on the walls, what you have seen is, you know, the mason typically mixes a cement and sand and then he uses this thin blade, which is actually a squeegee blade. He takes a bit of this cement and then puts it in on the wall and then he kind of presses it on the wall and it forms a very thin layer. Okay both for plaster of Paris as well as for cement if you have no. So, if you have noticed that you would have that is exactly what a screen print it is not a screen printing by the way, but that is how exactly the squeegee blade works. So, except in this case this is your work piece as shown in this picture and on top of that you have the screen and then you have this liquid polymer in, in, the, in the form of a paste actually going through these and forming this laminate. Okay. And remember there is a solder mask, clear. So, this is the outer process, layer process 2, step 1 we had seen in the last lecture, step 2. So, we end up with this one. Okay. We have ended up with a circuit board with exposed copper traces and, and these junction points. Okay. Now, what we have to do is, we want to protect these wiring traces and only expose those joints or those pads where I am going to bond these components. Okay. So, this is the outer layer of the circuit board. So, first what we will do is we will put this solder mask and as you can see these wiring traces in the second picture, these wiring traces are now covered. So, this, these orange colored traces have now become dark green because they are now covered with this solder mask. Okay, the thin polymeric coating. So, after that what we will do? We are going to deposit solder. Okay. So, as you can see now the exposed areas are now covered with solder. The ones that we had exposed, they are covered with solder. Clear? And then after that we are going to have this screening. Okay. We will have sometimes we also put you know some of these numbers or or you know identifiers on the circuit board. So, this is how finally, this looks like. So, what do we see? We see these bonding pads on which the components are going to come and get placed. Also, look over here, this is that connector piece. You will recall that this connector, you have seen these at least these, these connector pads which typically go into a socket, the motherboards actually are placed into a kind of a holder or a socket plugged in. All right. So, then let us look at step number 3. So, I have formed all the solder joints over here, all the solder pads. Next thing what we do is step 3 is we apply what is called a plating tape. Okay. We apply a plating tape and then on this side Plating tape sometimes is put across the entire board, we are showing only part of it or in the vicinity of these connection fingers as we call it. And then what we do is we remove the solder from the strip or we strip off the solder from that position and put a nickel plating. Okay. On top of that we do some gold plating. 
okay and that's why you see this golden uh, connectors right it's a very thin layer of gold many a times sometimes it can be other cheaper materials as well so we would do this gold plating and then remove the plating tape okay gold is expensive you don't want it to go everywhere <laughs> so at this connection you do it and then what you do is you kind of shape it off you remove this unwanted part and you just expose this one uh, you know this these fingers which are going to get into your into the circuit board socket okay so again uh, i want to acknowledge here that these figures uh, are from calci which is a center for advanced life cycle engineering at the university of maryland and uh, these are the, so the credit for this goes to goes to that center it's one of the leading electronic packaging centers in the world okay university of maryland college park another similar very leading pa electronic packaging center is in georgia tech okay in atlanta um, georgia institute of technology in short we call it georgia tech and the center is called prc or packaging research center okay these have been there for many years and uh, and i think as electronic packaging engineers uh, or, or people who are studying electronic packaging and manufacturing we should know these places there are many others uh, many other universities with such dedicated research centers for electronic packaging and manufacturing and i must also say that in this uh, in this field uh, of course some universities are there but there are also these research labs in various parts of the world okay which are dedicated to to this industry so even in the in asia in singapore taiwan uh, these people are are really really good in this field okay so anyway prc and calci packaging research center georgia tech calci or center for advanced life cycle engineering in the university of maryland uh, i think these are they have been there for a long time and they have made significant contributions to this field so we want to acknowledge their contributions a lot of that what i'm i am teaching in this course is something i learned through the works of you know engineers scientists and professors in these centers as well as many others uh, across the world okay including where i did my phd university of colorado i was part also of uh, i was also part of a similar center which used to be quite leading at that point um, but now it does not exist anymore it was called camp mode it was center for advanced manufacturing and packaging of optical and digital electronics microwave optical and digital electronics camp mode okay all right so coming back to this so this is where your motherboard or your circuit board is now ready all right so next what we will do is this is the preparation of the master layout etc so layout is prepared mostly of films all this okay so this is just for information we are not going to spend time on this one so now that i have this circuit board what do i do next i have to place the components okay so that is a final step which is the component assembly so the components are placed on the board by actually robotic machines automated pick and place machines and then what happens is components are placed and it undergoes through a soldering process okay it's many a times called wave soldering um, so again it's a soldering process where it goes through kind of an oven uh, where similar to what we saw in the assembly of ball grid array uh, the solder is just melted the time temperature plot curve is maintained such that the solder just melts and forms those bonds and what we will also see here so we have a nice video from fujitsu electronics in japan but they show the this last process and and part of the previous ones as well especially you will see stencil printing screen printing and so on but uh, what I, what i want to mention here is the fact that uh, you will see in the video even though most of the components are placed by automated pick and place there are still some components that are manually placed especially the ones that are through hole components the larger ones are still are still manually being inserted in those so that the you know in those through holes so that the pins exactly go into the hole and then uh, that is how the assembly is happens okay so it's not many a times it's completely automated but there are cases where it is maybe some of the components are not automatically placed they are still manual so with that what we will do now is we'll go to this uh, video which is quite educational i thought 
and I thought I will share with you. It is a bit long, but I think we will understand this and it also has some nice uh, you know captions at every step. So, Fujitsu is a Japanese company, I believe most of us have heard about it and now let us go through their process. Now, you come to the motherboard production. You can see the motherboard is coming here and a bit of labeling is being done for identify as identifier. So, at this stage what we see is the most of the motherboard is already fabricated. Okay. So, you can see all these pads, all the wiring traces. Now, look at the screen printing. This is where the solder is actually deposited through the solder mask. So, now the board has come with the solder deposited at the locations where it is supposed to be and now you see the components are being placed by the pick and place machines. So, this is a reflow soldering sometimes also called wave soldering where the solder will just melt. So, the board was turned upside down there are some positioning. Now, the screen printing on the upper side, we saw it on the one side and now it is the other side. This is where the positioning inspecting the joints. And now you see this component assembly. It is picking up the components from the different bins and going and placing it on the circuit board. See, it is going, picking up the components, placing it. And slowly the motherboard is or the circuit board is taking shape. I can call this a motherboard though, this is the large board. You will also be able to see a small BGA package on, on the board. So, these are some of the through hole components. This one is automated, this part. The through hole components are coming there and getting placed 
at the different positions you can see some capacitors being placed on the circuit board. Over here you see this silicon the ball grid array package. And now you see the manual insertion some of these components are still manually inserted especially you know these connectors like your USB, your VGA and some of these as well some of the other ones as well as is as we can see the operator manually inserting them at their designated locations. So, this is again wave soldering. So, that the through hole components now the solder is reflowed and the connections are made. And now your motherboard has come out, you can see all almost all the components are there including the connectors and now is a very important step which is quality. Okay. So, optical inspection quality inspection to see that number one all the components are in place and they are being held properly connections are made everything is done they say ok it comes out. Okay. And the next what they do is they do some electrical testing as well. Okay. So, just to see that the circuits are completed there is no you know no, no unfinished or open bonds or joints. So, for that there is an electrical test as is shown here. So, they run it it is a final functional test what, what they call it. So, the first one was quality was optical vi, uh, you know visual inspection and now it is an actual electrical test performance test. They have the standard tests which they run and if they get desired results it means that all these connections are made they are working perfectly and the board is ready to be shipped. Okay. So, this Fujitsu plant and Fujitsu is a Japanese company, but this plant is in Germany. So, I think it was there right at the in the first screen itself when we started the video. And here also you see that the most of these uh, and what you see the language over here on the screen they are all in German. Okay. So, that is it that is what I wanted to show you and I think you got a I hope you got a good feel of the process especially the final part where you know the motherboard is there the circuit board is there but unless you put the components that is when the board becomes functional. So, that is what was shown over here in the video. So, I hope you found that educational and uh, I believe this video actually does a good job. I mean I could have drawn or made slides, but that would not have given you the kind of feel that this video gives in, in 6 minutes. Okay. Finally, cleaning and coating um, then putting labeling etcetera and your motherboard is ready to be used or shipped. Okay. And that also concludes our discussion on motherboard and second level packaging. So, we have studied the characteristics fabrication and assembly of printed circuit boards. Right? This is the summary slide that you see here that was over the last 5 lectures this is what we studied. We started with anatomy of the circuit board we, then we looked at the materials and properties and then we went into the fabrication steps. So, we started with the master layout the CCL copper clad laminate that was a basic building block then we added layer by layer of copper uh, using photolithographic chemical etching drilling and plating of holes we talked about that. Then finally, today we talked about solder plating solder masks and finally, component placement which is where we took recourse of this video from Fujitsu which, uh, which I believe you, you also found quite educational. Okay. So, that is about it and that kind of brings us to the end of, uh, of our discussion on printed circuit boards uh, where we 
again this summary slide shows if we do a wrap up we discussed in uh, details about how you actually fabricate a motherboard and remember the motherboard if I if I may call it it is the you can call it the cardiovascular system or you can call it the nervous system whatever it is but motherboards because this is the this is the medium through which the signals are passed on from from the power supply to the main component and then from one component to the other and when I say components these are components on the circuit board. So, the circuit board is a very very important part I mean just to if I just give you a processor or a memory chip or a graphics chip unless you have the circuit board you do not have a product it is like you know giving you a brain and eyes and a heart uh, and a stomach, but that does not make the human being unless you have the nervous system and the vascular system uh, which helps in transmission of signals and transmission of blood providing providing the oxygen and all. So, other words uh, uh, otherwise this it is similar here. So, just the components do not make up an electronic product the circuit board actually is the medium that kind of adds functionality to the product makes it functional makes it usable ok. And as we see the circuit board is a green thing and we we use it in some form almost every day and we have seen most of, most of us have already seen one, but we never realize what goes inside ok. There are so many layers of copper traces that go inside only the outer layers is where we see these components placed, but it is as I said it is like a it is like an urban transport system. Sometimes the two wires have to go, but unlike where roads can intersect two wires cannot intersect. So, one has to go above the other. So, you have this different different layers inside the circuit board you are coming like this or you cannot meet. So, ok move up and then go right. So, different layers and the more the number of layers of course, the more, num more the number of traces you can have or the smaller is the footprint of your motherboard because you have really gone high right. And the analogy I gave is having a number of row houses versus having a multi storied apartment complex apartment building right. So, that is where we if you remember we started when we are talking about different layered motherboards uh, we saw two examples of a laptop 13 inch laptop one was a much larger board one was a smaller board ok one was I think Dell the other was Apple because the Apple motherboard is 8 layer motherboard and this one is a 6 layer motherboard. So, that is why this was much larger in surface area or in footprint as you see from the top ok. So, so motherboard I, what I am trying to say is a motherboard is a very important part and again I go back to my example and I keep on instead of circuit board I keep on using the word motherboard very often is because at Intel I was part of a group of course, I was doing thermal design, but the partner the sister group which was a lot much larger one was a motherboard man, motherboard design group and uh, it was really one of the top groups even though it was located in Intel India it was one of the top ones across the world they were real experts in in motherboard design. And so, I had I interacted with them and I had a good feel first hand feel of how how difficult and how complicated those tasks can be especially the design. See one thing we did not even talk about here because this course is more about looking at the mechanical and manufacturing aspects of electronic packaging, but to design this wiring traces ok the wireability that is a major major part ok. So, that we we just assume that that is done and then now how do I make it that is where we started, but in the design phase itself is extremely extremely complicated task ok. I will just end with a little uh, note of humor. So, many a times we would have this top level executives visit us and each of our groups will showcase our work and uh, so of course, I will show me and my teammates we will show some thermal technologies whatever we have developed, uh, but this board group of course, first of all they had all these motherboards and the circuit boards and they will put that in display. And so, they used to create a joke. So, when you know when when somebody important comes we say that we will lay the red carpet for them and this team used to joke and say oh this guy is coming. So, yeah no problem we will show we will lay the green carpet for them. So, green carpet they meant, meant this this circuit boards which are green in color the organic circuit boards with organic laminates which are green in color ok. okay. Thank you very much. So, that kind of wraps up our discussion on circuit boards and second layer and second level packaging. 
what we will do next is now we will go more on the reliability side where we are going to talk about thermal we are going to talk about structural and overall life cycle uh, predictions okay we'll also talk a little bit of vibrations so we are i think today around half the course so half of the course was on manufacturing then the remaining half will be, we will be looking into these various reliability aspects okay thank you very much and see you in the next lecture